Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to take a look at creating an expandable text box, and that's an auto expanding text box, really, I should say. Uh, text box that just expands automatically depending on the content you put in it. If you put a line of text, it's going to expand a little. If you put a whole book in it, it's going to expand quite a bit more. And using this kind of text box is really going to save you quite a bit of time when you go back and you edit content in a website. When you're creating a website, nothing's quite certain, nothing's set yet. It's really a good way to keep everything kind of fluid and moving until you get everything set in stone and where you want it. And even once you have everything set in stone, you can always just keep it like that because, hey, it's always easy to go back and change and it looks just like you've set it to be exactly precise, but it's really just the HTML telling or adjusting itself depending on the amount of content put in. So first thing we need to do is think back on when we created this web text box in Photoshop. I have the video up of me creating this web text box in Photoshop and then we exported it as an HTML page with a folder of images. Now we need to get this HTML page into Dreamweaver so I'm just going to click and drag and drop it on this white area in Dreamweaver. By the way, I'm using Adobe Bridge. If you don't have Adobe Bridge, don't panic. You can just use your operating system's file browser, find the HTML page we created if you've created it. If not, you can just watch this. But if you've created it, you can certainly follow along. So we've just dragged in webtextbox.html. You can see it setting right there in the files panel. Now, in webtextbox.html, all of the images are coming from a folder called images. And you can see I have a folder called images in this Dreamweaver site. So all I really need to do is drag the images out of the images folder into the images folder. Okay, if I were to drag this images folder into this images folder, it would not work because webtextbox.html knows that the images for the text box are in a folder called images, not in a folder called images and then inside of another folder called images. So, if I've completely confused you, don't panic. Just open up that images folder, select all of the images, and drag them into a folder called images. Now, if you don't have a folder called images in your website, then you can just come in here and drag this entire images folder in. But usually, if you're creating a website, you're going to have an image, an image folder, and fitly named images, which is what I have here. So I just drag those graphics for that web text box right here. We've got all of our web text box files. I can minimize Adobe Bridge now and let's open up webtextbox.html and here we go. It's working just fine. I can preview it in the browser. Just click that little globe button. Preview it in Firefox. There it is. So we know all the images are being properly referenced. They're all in their proper place. So that's good to know. It knows that everything is in proper working order. Select the entire table just by dragging over it and come down into the properties panel and hit align center. Now, when we created this in Photoshop, we um, created the center just a solid color that was, so that as well could expand or contract depending on what was put into it without pixelating. Now, you can put a repeating background image in here, that'd be perfectly fine as well, but for our purposes, I'm just going to select a background color of E1, 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 which we don't have here. So I'm just going to type in E1, E1, E1. Now, I just did something very bad, and I did it on purpose. I don't want you to think I did it because I'm not good at this. Uh, <laughs> I typed E1, E1, E1 in here without putting a pound symbol at the very beginning. Make sure you hit Shift 3. That's that pound symbol. If you don't put that at the beginning, it will not work. So let's just save this and if we preview this it looks just like it did before with the image. That's wonderful. That means it's working properly but now you can see we can actually type on this. See, I can type here. Okay, not vcan. I can type here. But one other thing that's wrong is now if it's going to let me select the type, there we go. This type is in the very center of our cell. We want it to start at the top and go to the bottom. So, I have to make my Dreamweaver window a little bit smaller so you can see this. Down in the Properties panel again, go to Vertical Alignment and select Top. You can see now 
it is aligned starting at the top. It's exactly what I want. Let me get rid of this text, and I'm going to come over here to index.html, and I'm going to grab a bit of text. Because we still haven't really made our expandable text box. So far, it's just a text box, and it's been me rambling on, talking about all sorts of different things. But here, we're going to encounter our first problem, the fact that this text box is not yet expandable. Hit Command or Control S to save, and then press the globe button, or F12. The hotkey for that is F12 preview this in the browser. You can see that these sides do not expand with the text. Big problem. So let's check out the solution for it. What we need to do is somehow set these images to go from the very top of this to the very bottom and to always do that no matter what the size of this text box is. So simply setting the height of these to be something crazy or enormous like a seven or eight hundred we're going to do something completely different because a problem with setting them to seven or eight hundred pixels high is that if I were to take all of this text out except for a couple sentences, then we'd have this massive text box and we have to click on them again and then you know tweak them and edit them depending on the amount of text we have in there. It's gonna be much easier if Dreamweaver just automatically does that as soon as we put the text in there. So it'll save a bunch of time. So let's just select these images because we're gonna delete them in a minute. But one thing I want to point out before we go and delete these is that these images will never appear pixelated, number one, because they're a solid color. But I could put gradients in here as well and have them stretch. And I'll show you exactly how. Pop over to Photoshop real quick. Create a new document. I'm just going to create a standard 500 by 300. It's not really standard anything, but I'm going to create a small square about that big. Oops, and create a new layer. Now grab the gradient tool and let's just grab a gradient such as this gold colored gradient here. Now this is not a default, this is something I have. I'm just gonna draw this little gold gradient straight across here. I'm gonna deselect. Now if I were to expand this or make this wider or taller, it would appear pixelated. All right, you can see there it looks pixelated. And that's how Dreamweaver would stretch it. Now if I let go, Photoshop automatically tries to fix that and does a pretty good job because, hey, it's only solid colors like that. It's not like a photo or anything like that. But, see, this color is not expandable to the side like that. You can see how it almost immediately looks pixelated pretty badly. But, if I make it taller, it never looks pixelated because all it's doing is basically stacking all these layers one on top of each other. And what exactly I mean by that is, if I were to come in here and just select one pixel off the top, all right, and move that straight up and deselect it, that is the entire color for the rest of this. And it's that little bit right there that you can just stretch out. You see that? And it just does not look pixelated because it's just the same color. It's the same row of color. Okay, you can look at it that way. It's the same, as long as it's the same row of color, this could look like a piece of metal. It could look like anything. As long as it's that same row of color that you're stretching up or down, you're going to be fine. Or if you want to stretch it across the screen, you just have to make sure it's rotated this way. Okay? And we could stretch it out this way as much as we wanted. Then we wouldn't be able to stretch it with, or height wise, excuse me. You can see how it starts to look pixelated. So, that's what I mean by stretchable colors. And. You really, when you start playing around with gradients and start playing around with colors that you want to stretch or images that you want to stretch, you're going to quickly see what exactly I'm talking about. So before we delete these images, we just want to take a quick look at what images they are. We've got webtextbox02.gif and webtextbox04.gif. So I'm just going to delete them both. Now we're just going to select one of these cells, and here we're going to set a background image. Background image of webtextbox02. And on this side, background image of web text box 04. I'm going to hit Command or Control S and press F12. Preview this in my browser, and you can see, wonderful. It goes top to bottom flawlessly. It's exactly what I want. Let's go back to Dreamweaver. So that's how you create an expandable text box. I believe I touched on everything that I needed to touch on and let you know about. Um, 
Obviously, this image up here would not be an expandable image. You wouldn't be able to just make this text box go as wide and wide and wide as you want without doing a little bit of editing. It would be possible, but it would make this table much more complicated. So that's it. That's an auto-expanding text box. Now, before I go, I'm going to show you real quick how to create an auto-expanding navigation bar. This is going to be much faster. This should only take a couple minutes. I get a, a whole ton of emails asking me, how do you create those awesome navigation bars you know from this site to that side of the other site that go all the way across the screen it's actually really easy and I'm going to show you how to do it here using tables you can also do it using CSS but maybe some other day we'll get into that for now I'm just going to do quick basic use a table select in the common tools area just press table up pops your table dialog box set it to have one row and three columns and set the table width default I believe is 450 pixels set it to 100%. That way the table now goes 100% of the way across the screen regardless of the width of the screen. This is key. If you don't do this, it's never going to work properly. Second, select your center cell. Control click it to select that individual cell. Come down here into the properties panel and set the width to the width pixel in pixels of all of your buttons. I've got, I believe, five buttons going into this, and I know that combined, all of those images equal 309 pixels wide. So this center cell is now 309 pixels, and these cells on the outsides just fill in the extra. I am going to come up to my images area, and I have all of these button bar GIF images. I'm just going to start dragging them in, and I'm not going to set the alternative text dragging these images right in just like that and yes 309 pixels is in fact the exact size of all those images lined up you can see they fit into that cell nicely now the last thing to do is to make the image on either side that is going to fill in the difference or make up the difference just select the entire table because we're going to apply a background image to the entire table again I selected the entire table just by dragging my mouse up over it as if I was making a selection using a marquee tool in Photoshop or just using the normal cursor tool in Flash or if I was just highlighting text just click and drag over it you get this background image area in your properties panel use the point to file tool and I'm going to hit button bar 06 and that is one of those very thin gradients that just stacks itself over and over and again over and over and over again side by side going all the way across the screen one last thing we're going to hit is I'm just going to select the table and no, actually we're not going to do anything else. I believe that's it. I'm going to save it and just preview it in the browser and check it out. And you can see I've got a pretty wide monitor here. And I'm just going to stretch it out a little further. And you can see that the buttons still appear to be in the very center of my browser window, regardless of how I change regardless of how I change it, until I get to be you know, insanely small, and then the buttons just all stack up. So that's how you create that auto-expanding navigation bar. Throw it in as a bonus at the end of the auto-expanding web text box. That's how you do it. That's the basics behind it. It's really just creating that background image inside of a cell that expands to 100% of whatever the content you're putting into your table cell is. That's the whole concept behind it. So work on that, practice it, and it's really a great thing to know how to do. So I hope you've learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Please check out www.tutvid.com for more video tutorials. Thank you for watching.